Hey folks, this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly talk about the Providence Ridge map, specifically, which final base to choose, the Fire Hall or the Lumber Mill? This is something that I've been going back and forth on for quite a while, and I finally settled on one location. Yes, I chose the Lumber Mill, and there's a couple of reasons why. Let's go ahead and open up our map. The Lumber Mill can be found in the bottom right hand corner of the map. Here's a quick look at the entire map here. You start off up here, up right hand corner, the Firewatch Fortress. And I did make a base at the fenced warehouse, which was kind of nice. Um, the extra warehouse storage, um, I think gave me an extra 20 for each resource, which was good. Um, the failed Cleo drop, I eventually got someone trained in programming. So I was able to clear that out and get a lot of good benefits out of that. So um, from there, I had a choice either the fire hall, which is down here, or the lumber mill, which is over here to the right. Now, part of me, just for, I don't know, just I, I, I like the look of the fire station. Uh, part of me wanted it because of how cool it looked, where it was in the surrounding town and how everything looked there, but... The problem that I have with it is a couple of things. One, the utility room. There is a utility room which provides, well, utilities to you, and as the builder, I have a builder perk, and I don't need it, okay? I already have free power and free water via the builder perk, so I don't need the utility room to provide that to me. Another thing I don't like is that the facility has a lot of built-in structures. So, um, there's, there's park, or there's the scout tower, the firehouse workshop, the kitchen, the bunks, emergency services training. The facility only has two large outdoor slots and two small outdoor slots. And you're probably going, well, that sounds good. I mean, it has all these built-in things and a bunch of, you know, open slots. Yeah, I agree with you. Part of me still wanted to take the fire hall because of that, but because of the utility room and... The lack of the ability to do what I wanted, like I wanted to create a base from scratch and not have to be confined by what the base gives me. That's just my preferred play style. So I instead went to this over here and basically it's just, let's go ahead and open up my base screen real quick. So the lumber mill, everything is empty with the exception of the sawmill and the command center. Everything else is, for the most part, free. You can do what you want. Oh, and that and this storage. So, what I did, and this is, this is a really cool setup, and I'm liking it so far. I'm going to switch things out maybe down the line, but this is what I've done with it. And I've had to play musical facilities for a while because um, I didn't have the time or the resources to do it right out of the gate. So what you can do, um, whenever you choose a leader, you'll be able to then create the, um, the appropriate um, project for them. So for example, if you are the warlord, you can create the armory. If you are the builder, you can create the sniper tower. If you are the sheriff, you can create the field hospital. So I've been playing musical leaders just switching them out, demoting them, assigning a new one. Just be warned that whenever you demote a person as a leader, and to do that, you just click on them from this screen. Don't zoom in on them like this, where it says take control, don't do that. Just zoom out, and then you can hold an X to demote leader. It'll say, do you really wish to do this? You still have to talk to them in order to do it. You send someone over to them, talk to them, and they'll be demoted. Whenever you do that, they'll get a morale penalty, and they'll start off with a citizen rating of zero again. So you have to build them back up to full if you want them to become a hero again to the point where they can become a leader. Now, um, why do I have all of these different, uh, why do I have all of, why do I have three different projects going at once? Well, I just noticed that it has the uh, unintentional side effect of creating a huge morale bonus. Um, everyone that is a sheriff likes the sheriff um, project and everyone that is like that likes the builder likes the builder project and so on look plus 25 plus 25 plus 25 plus 25 plus 25 plus 20 
all of these plus 25s come from the fact that all of these people are part of, are, are a leader, and they have a leader that has the appropriate building. I do not have a trader yet in my lumber mill. I was thinking about now that I've gotten a huge morale bonus from creating these three projects, I could then get rid of my lounge three. I'm, I'm really hesitant to do that for a number of reasons. I'm, I'm still debating on what I want to do with this. Um, I need bed space, first of all. The barracks two um, gives me six beds per day. If I'm the warlord, I can upgrade that to um, eight beds, I believe. Um, yeah, eight beds with a morale penalty, but with all those projects bonuses, um, I don't think I'm going to need to worry about that. But even with eight beds, um, that still may not be enough. Um, so I built, I built this sheltered bed inside my home so that I could bring on more people and get a wider variety of skills. Um, part of me wants to get, um, uh, instead of like, like I have a hydroponics, but I kind of want to switch that over to medicine from time to time to uh, get meds per day so that I can then um, possibly craft in my infirmary some painkillers, which I, that I could then use to trade with. You know, so I'm, I'm, I'm experimenting with different loadouts, trying to figure out what I finally want. But I have the field hospital, the sniper tower, the armory. At some point, I wouldn't mind a trader. So that I could possibly get the fourth bonus or the fourth bonus uh, leader building, but part of me is going, I don't need it at this point. The whole purpose of the trader project is the free influence and the ability to call in traders anytime you want. Well, I've got enough influence based on where I'm at right now. Like I've got two thousand influence, and I'm I'm not having any issue earning influence, so I really don't need the trader. Um, and it's, if I were to get a trader, it would be one person and only to have one person be benefited by, in the morale sense, like, look, under empowered, how I showed you Brummet completed leader project. If I had brought in one leader for the sole purpose of promoting them to a trader leader and then building that structure, it would only be a bonus 25 leader project morale bonus. And that would be it. So part of me is going, you know what, I might as well just keep the lounge, the lounge three provides two extra beds per day and this provides my six that I need so I may just undo my sheltered beds and not bring anyone else on board and accept the fact that I won't get pharmacology or whatever um, in order to craft some of these more dangerous more uh, more valuable pills you know what I mean I, I want everything it's a shame that State of Decay doesn't have a base big enough to let you do that I would love to have everything but I have to pick and choose what I may end up doing is I may destroy the sheltered beds and maybe do another hydroponics or I don't know. I'm, I'm still debating, but it's cool that you can switch out your leaders. Just be warned, though, you're going to have to play musical chairs, um, musical leaders in order to do that. You're also going to have to play musical um, buildings for a short period of time, like um, in the very unless you take the sheriff leader right out of the gate. You're not going to be able to build this field hospital, meaning that you're... I had it an infirmary here where the sheltered beds were. I had it an infirmary here, leveled up, and then that was taking care of my base until I got my field hospital set up. And then I dismantled the infirmary, and I could put something else inside. So, again, you're going to be dismantling rooms, adding rooms, dismantling rooms, adding rooms, so that you're still covered on certain things. But ultimately, I think the lumber mill is the ideal setup here. Um, because you can create all these different field projects or all these leader projects and complete them. Um, I may get rid of the armory and take the trader anyway. The armory is okay. It um, allows me to create any kind of ammunition I want. It allows me to produce ammo resources. Um, if we take a look at my current setup with outpost and resource income, my food is minus one a day. I'm, I'm earning 4.5 per day via hydroponics, and then I have two food outposts, so I'm only minus one per day. Meds is only minus one per day via an outpost. Um, I'm only minus one ammo per day because of the sniper tower, and I think the sniper tower is a must because you have no small slot on the outside in the lumber mill, meaning you can't build a watchtower. So people are going to complain there's no watchtower under the morale penalties, but the sniper tower offsets that. 
So I think the sniper tower is an important building to have here because you do not have a small slot to build that watchtower. So the sniper tower is kind of a must if you don't want to take that morale hit. Um, but anyway, getting back to this, the only thing that I'm low on per day is materials, minus four per day. But the sawmill, which is nice, will produce materials. I can produce three materials. The downside is that it makes sieges extremely dangerous. I've already had two... I've had two juggernauts attack me at once. It was rather nasty. That being said, if you're well set up and you've got a lot of ammo and, and some good weaponry, um, the ideal setup here is I've, I'm making a lot of noise and I'm drawing all of these dangerous zeds toward me. I'm earning influence left and right through base defense. Okay, I haven't left my base all that much. And, I mean, yeah, I'm getting attacked on a regular basis. There's a Juggernaut here that I just recently killed. But, like, I'm earning a lot of influence doing that. Hence another reason why I don't need the Trader right now. The only reason I may need a Trader is to find those hard-to-find books. To maybe, you know, teach someone else something. But, honestly, I haven't really had a need for the Trader building. Because I've been attacked so often at this location that I'm just earning 50 here, 18 there, 20 there, just, and the influence just racks up, and I, I moved here, like, I don't know, I want to say four or five in-game days ago, and you can see, I mean, I've got no shortage of cars, if, if you're having trouble um, storing all of your resources, find cars in the environment, This it's better with multiplayer, because you can Go out with a friend, and then your friend can drive the vehicle back for you. If you don't have that luxury, I've just been calling down vehicle deliveries. Like, here's my one one and only vehicle delivery. This is the one I go out with. But these other vehicles I've had since the beginning of the game. And I've just been using them to store resources. So these two aren't even parked anywhere, but they're holding resources for me. And then on the other side of the lumber mill. Gotta be quieter. No, I don't. I want to be as loud as possible. And on the other side, I've got this army truck full of resources. And then this car... If you can, find cargo vans. They hold the most. You can hold in eight resources. But you can see here, I mean, I'm, I'm stocked for bear. My only concern with this is that juggernauts can blow up vehicles. So if you come across one, try to lead them away from these vehicles so that they don't blow up. That would be bad. But other than that... I'm liking the lumber mill. Um, I can do so much more here than I could with the fire station. It's up to you. This is that's the beauty of this game. It lets you it lets you sort of pick what you want, uh, customize your base to a limited degree the way you want to. And in my case, the lumber mill lets me uh, customize things even more so. So there you go. Um, hopefully you found this helpful. Um, if you guys haven't already, subscribe to me on Twitch and YouTube. That way you can stay up to date with any new content I've been to publish. This is Vince, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.